For the last 60 days, we have been focused on strengthening our prayer life. Do you see the growth in your prayer life? Have you seen the difference your consistent prayers have made? Continue your prayer journey with us by visiting the prayer room and posting your prayers on the prayer wall or on our website, readsimple.org forward slash prayer dash wall. Stop by the prayer table in the lobby, write your prayers on dissolvable paper and drop it in the prayer bowl. And as it dissolves, believe that God has already answered your prayer. Hello, Reed Temple family, and welcome to Temple News Live. We have some exciting announcements this week, so let's get started. Reed Temple's Faith and Finance Ministry presents Stewardship, the Other 90%. This is a virtual course that will be held on Mondays from April 8th to May 27th from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. For more information, email readfaithandfinance at gmail.com. Luminous Health presents Mobile Health Clinic with Reed Temple. We will be providing free blood pressure, diabetes, and cholesterol screenings. This will be held on April 20th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. right here at Reed Temple. Reed Temple's Prison Ministry presents the Second Chance Awareness Month. This event will be held on Saturday, April 27th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. and will include the expunging of criminal records, a job fair, provider services, and computer training. Make sure you register by Wednesday, April 17th. Are you actively serving in ministry at Reed Temple? Well, you're going to want to save the date for our volunteer appreciation celebration. This will be held on Sunday, April 28th from 1130 a.m. to 2 p.m. And make sure you wear your black, white, or silver dressy attire. Make sure you register at reedtemple.org forward slash events. Hello, ladies. Women's season 2024 is fast approaching and our theme for it is the power of her. God is within her. She will not fail. Psalm 46.5. We have a lot of events coming up for the month of June and kicking us off is our PJ and Praise Mixer happening on June 14th. For more information on all of the events happening for women's season 2024, visit retemple.org forward slash events. And that's all of the announcements for this week. Make sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms. And until next time, have a wonderful and blessed day. Is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest strength, but boldly lean on Jesus' name. When darkness fills his loving face, I rest on His unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor falls within the veil. On Christ the solid rock. On Christ the solid rock. His power is able to keep me from falling. came in smooth Great. this morning smooth <laughs> smooth smooth good morning on christ the solid rock we stand all other ground is no. sinking sand man that's some good stuff right there we got to stand on the rock stand, stand on, on the, the rock, rock y'all good morning everybody good morning good morning reverend dr device ababu thomas how art thou Ooh. I am fine, Reverend Joseph E. Deck III. Pastor, uh, how are you? I'm doing all right. God is good. God is good. I, I haven't had a chance to look at your Bible study yet, but I've been hearing the reverberations that you did something last night. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I, I always pray that somebody's life can be changed or touched or that they would just love God more and love each other more. And, and it was a pretty good response, even though... 
the rains um, scared a lot of people. Those who came were just ready to study God's word. And that's what's good about it. And then I understand quite a few stayed home and watched it. So we're just so glad that we can be a part of the ministry of Reed Temple to spread the gospel and get people inspired to study. And I thank God that, that Reverend, uh, our, our pastor, Reverend Marky Whitlock uh, Jr. Um, and trust me to do it when he's away doing ministry uh, throughout the land. So it's, it's a blessing for me. So I'm happy. Yeah, you Tired, made a lot but of happy. <laughs> what did you talk about last night? <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, look like the good doctor froze. One of us froze. Can y'all still hear me? I hope. I pray. Yes, that means that you can still hear me. Uh, see the enemy. I know we got something hot. We got something hot when the enemy starts messing with us like that. Uh, but God is good. God is good. The real Lord's prayer. Great Bible study lesson. So I yeah, see that y'all were really blessed by what Dr. Can you hear me? did uh, last night. Great Bible study lesson. Thank you, Dr. Debye, for the Bible study. Doc, I see you back. Talk so we'll see if we can hear you. Uh, I look like Doc is still frozen. All right. Okay, I see you now. Yeah, okay. Look like you're here. I'm waving. We still can hear frozen? you. No, you're good now, it looks like. You're good. You're good. We I'm I was good. just marveling at the folks oh. uh talking about your Bible study in the chat and seeing what you talk. You talk about the real world oh. prayer. Is that what you talked about? Yeah, which is it, which is um really in John 17, Come because on. the scripture that we use as the Lord's Prayer was the prayer that Jesus told the disciples when the disciples asked him, teach us how to pray. So that wasn't the Lord's prayer. That's the disciples' prayers. Uh, the Lord's prayer is in John 17. And if you read John 17, you hear Jesus' prayer for us. And it's amazing. It's remarkable. You see how much Jesus loves us. Wow. And now he prayed for his disciples. Then he prayed for everybody else who's going to believe him to come. And that includes us. So everybody was very responsive. It was touching. I, I love that. I love that. I just love Jesus. And I love how John captures some things about Jesus that the other disciples didn't. Wow. So let's see, if I'd have said that, Dr. Bayer would have said, he's so deep, Red. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she would have said. If I'd have said all that good stuff, she just said. <laughs> so y'all, now you got the real lord's prayer and sometimes tradition can make us label things a certain way we the just real go lord's with it. prayer but that's that that's good i'm gonna certainly go back and listen mm -hmm. to it how y'all this morning good to see you i see y'all popping up early this morning and the award goes to dot love lace at 456 oh i'm sorry 416 you are before Woo! 16. kathy kathy white Four robinson 431 good lord emily Page Ely, 504. Reverend E.H. Brown, how you, how art thou? 509. And Stephanie Houston, 518. Dottie Lovelace, 519. They coming. Michael DeLoach, 520. I know Ken and Mike's on there. Mike, Ken Dickerson, 520. Valerie McCombrey, wow. 525. And uh, there's one of our island sisters, Patricia Hibbert, coming in at 526. Hey, how are you? Yeah, I knew Doc was going to chime in. John Hammond, 540. Rosie Carter, Deborah Dixon. D, D Square, 543. Lansy, how you, Lansy? 544. Uh, and I was waiting. I saw Hilton's oh, message. Stuck in there. Yeah, good morning, yeah, you everybody. You snuck in there around 545. I'm yeah, saying you I just, snuck in around 545, huh? You're so good. I just snuck in there. Wonder, why hey, we Hilton. come in twice? I don't know. That's something about when I you come in from the uh, stream yard like that. It always gives me twice. So it's I twice. just okay. Mm -hmm. Hilton, good morning. Good to see you, Bon Dia, my friend. Good to see you. And of course, there's the one that Doc I always leave it for her to pronounce. Who lost things? Oh, I went too far yeah. down, didn't I? There she is on the Where screen. Am I? You see it? Oh, Eileen Ratigan. Eileen Ratigan. Yeah, Ratigan. that's all you. 
<laughs> James, thank Hughes. you, thank hey, you, Del- James. Good morning, five fifty-two. Oh, Rita oh, Carr, Shade Atkin. Thank you. They all on here. Valerie, Fa- they thought you were teaching this morning. I know what this is. Lenora Scott. Hey, ah, oh, Reverend Kim Terry Hill. Good no, morning. they knew. They know who's teaching. They uh, love us both. Suzette Gerby. Hey, Grandma Des is on too. Uh, Rev Odessa, a mentor is on. Mm-hmm. Gonna help me consecrate Sunday. Cassandra Kuzer. Yeah. Or Kuzer. Diane Proctor. Oh, wow. Praise God. Y'all, y'all aren't playing this morning. Y'all are on. Diane Porter. Good morning, Sister Diane. How art thou? Sound got real comfortable mm-hmm. now. I, I drink Valerie my, uh, Fountain. Tea. Mm-hmm. Y'all got time. Got got time to go to fix tea. We said I got some water. Yeah, look, I, done, I done got comfortable with y'all. See, I had to make sure what? the tea bag, so in case y'all thought I was drinking. Tonya Cup. What's that? I- oh, you know Navy man. It, it's um, it's a Navy yeah, right. ship, you know. of course. Look, y'all know it's a Navy ship, a schooner. Oh, okay. Uh, and it talks about what is it talking about? Oh, that's good. A frigate. And it gives the history of a frigate, a swift, strong vessel. It was well armed for its size with 18 to 24. You know, I, you know, veterans, we never let it go. We never let it go. <laughs> so I had to put, make sure y'all saw the tea bag in case y'all thought I was drinking something else. So you see the tea bag. Okay? That's deep. That's deep. Mm. Yeah, right. We know people <laughs> can do that. We know. We know you're a holy man. We know you're a holy man. <laughs> oh, you know, holy man, everybody. Welcome to holy man. <laughs> <laughs> well, Doc, praise uh, God. How you and your family God. make it through the rain? I saw a great family picture of y'all up at Payne and uh, with Brother Melick and. Uh, of course, we had the seven last words. Oh, my goodness. We're just so glad to see everybody this morning. Lisa Gabrielle Betts. Anybody new online? Just put in there. I'm new, and we want to just send you something special this morning. We're glad to be here. I'm excited about Reverend uh, Joe. I don't know if you all came to our Friday night, uh, Friday last word service, seven last word service, and mm-hmm. Reverend Joe threw down mm-hmm. after listening to six fantastic words people are trying to say well what are you gonna do now everybody they've just pulled all the energy out of everything i don't know where he got it from he reached up into the outermost parts of heaven and pulled down whatever uh, remnants of the holy ghost were left and just took us <laughs> zooming out it. there oh my god it's in his head i think i found the old <laughs> manuscript dr Say Biden god was our head. Know i stole it <laughs> <laughs> yeah right no 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 you was gone you was gone you were gone you probably you probably still be preaching if you didn't have to preach on sunday you know <laughs> it was awesome it was awesome i'm yeah, telling you that melic, that you're being melic a pastor was... and that melody did a great job uh honoring the third Hello? word and uh it was so good to hear him say it's still, still in my head on on my mom, on my hood. I look fly, I look good. That's still in my head because of Mellon. I look good. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's so funny? I, I hadn't heard that song before. And when he started started talking about it, Reverend Mia starts going through all the words. And I said, Reverend Mia knows this song. And she I said, oh my God, if Reverend Mia knows this song, I go check it out. Yeah, I said, my girl knows it. But uh, it was a really good service. Everybody had so much to say. It was a real blessing. And I pray you all at least went to hours with some seven last words service. And, of course, Easter. Because, uh, you know, we had to bring them up. Bring them up. We had to, right. we had to get them up from there. The, the rock. Got to get them up. Got to th- gotta move the tomb, the, the the boulder, the stone out the way. And, and that's why we're here. And Reverend Joe has something this morning that's going to roll whatever residue stones <laughs> away that you had left after Easter Sunday. So I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to move forward because I want to see this word he's got for us this morning because 
I need a good, good word. So without Amen. further ado, you know him, the, the 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 former minister to men and the minister to men emeritus of Reed Temple <laughs> African Methodist Episcopal Church, the beloved intellect, the guru of reconciliation, <laughs> radical reconciliation, the peacemaker, the organizer, the mm. one who comforts us when we're going through stuff, the, the erudite, expressive, excellent, <laughs> extraordinary ministry oh, of Reverend, uh, of, of Darcy's son, uh, Darcy's of Reverend son. Joseph That's my Pierre. Honor. Deck the third. That's the high honor, hear, our sister. <laughs> hear, hear you him and be blessed. Amen. Amen. I thank Doc for for always. Just I don't know how she comes up with these creative introductions. Y'all know us, and she always has a word. Let us pray. Lord, speak through me uh, to speak to your people. And uh, as the cups are out, uh, we're grateful for overflow. Consecrate me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our word will come today from Luke, the 24th chapter, just uh, three verses, verses six, seven, and eight. Luke 24, verses six through eight. And the New King James Version says, he is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee? saying that the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. That's it. That, that's a good, I like the way they embolden that last word. And they remembered his word. Let's speak from the study today. I need a word. I need a word. And I hope there's some folk out there that need a word this morning. I need a word. Oh, my goodness. My brothers and sisters, uh, when we go through things in life, uh, I don't have to shout it out too too hard, but sometimes like there are ups and there are downs in life. We know that there's good and there's bad. We even write songs about it. I've had some good days. I've had some bad days. But when I look around, the good outweigh the bad. Life is full of triggers that can trigger us. There are certain words that can be said that brings back trauma that we've experienced in life. There are certain words that bring back pleasant and wonderful memories uh, where maybe there were marriages or graduations, or maybe there was a word that you just received a word that said, I've been promoted. Maybe your word has been that there's a new baby on the way, or it's a boy, it's a girl. Words have impact and power upon our lives. It is words uh, that help us to deal with life on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and, and I don't know about you, when I'm a little bit down or when I just need a good word, it's, isn't it wonderful when somebody can walk into your space and give you a word of encouragement, a word that will bless you, a word uh, that will move you and motivate you to move mountains out of the way. You ever had a word like that? Certainly, we know the famous words that people have said. Everyone knows. I don't even have to say the name of the person uh, when you hear these words. I've been to the mountaintop, and I've looked over, and I've seen the front. Or oh, I have a dream. I have a dream that one day my children will be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the context of their character, that, that, that's a word. You don't even have to uh, worry about who said that word. Oh, four score and 20 years ago, we stand at this great, you know, Abraham Lincoln, the Gettysburg Address. Ask not what 
your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. Words are powerful. Y'all, I love it. Y'all helping me teach this this morning. Words, words, words. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words. I mean, it, it's something about word uh, that can put us at a place. And I know that we just got through Easter. And having gone through Easter, you've heard the text that I've read. And I hope that I that I believe, I hope that I can bring a revelation around, not just that he got up from the tomb. <clears throat> the right words at the right time can truly uplift. Thank you, Reverend Kim. Not just that there was uh, an earthquake. And, and of course, he gave us the gift of everlasting life. That's great. That's great. But I, I pray that there's a revelation inside of the word. And I want to focus on the word that came to the sisters that came to the tomb. Uh, can I set it up a little bit? Y'all already know the story. Uh, the Marys came before Mary, Mary, Mary even, even sung the song, uh, Drop These Shackles Off of My Feet. We had the, the Marys that were coming to the tomb of Jesus. who Y'all know they had herbs and spices where they were going to anoint the body of Jesus. And on their way, uh, they, they had heard words, okay? They had heard some words. Uh, they saw things at their own eyes. Joseph of Arimathea uh, and Nicodemus, two of the members of the Sanhedrin council uh, that hinged on the word of Jesus Christ, that there would be salvation. They took him to his tomb. And I often said, oh, Joseph's family might have got upset with him because his their graveyard wasn't the best real estate in the town because his tombs were not far from the hill called Golgotha, the place of skulls, the place where crucifixions happened, the place where death uh, was the rule of the day. But Joseph, maybe he got a good real estate deal. Who knows? But uh, that's where the tomb was. And, and the interesting thing to note here is as the women are on the way, I often wondered <clears throat> that stone that was in front of the tomb, some scholars believe it weighed a ton, uh, 2,000 pounds, because they were trying to make sure that no one would go in and disturb the bodies. That That's important. And especially this body. What was important about this body? Well, he, he had, they had heard rumors through word of mouth that this man, Jesus the Christ, proclaimed that in three days he would rise again. He would get up from the grave and he would get up and live. And in order to prevent someone coming to steal his body, <clears throat> the Roman guards and centurions were placed around the stone and around the grave to secure his body so that the words they heard that, that were really true uh, would not be believed. I think uh, y'all got the setup real good. I think y'all got the setup real good. But I want you to understand now in my first point, in my first point, uh, my first point here, in order for you to hear a word, uh, something bad has to happen. Uh, uh oh, wait a minute. Let me explain that. Doesn't something bad that have to always happen. But sometimes when God gets your attention, he's allowed trauma to, to shake you uh, out, of, out of a fantasy. Trauma sometimes has a way of shaking us into a reality so that we're paying attention to the words that we need. Uh, let me put the point uh, like this. Uh, oftentimes, tragedy makes us closer, gets us closer to God's strategy. That's your first point. Sometimes tragedy will get us closer to God's strategy. Even no matter what you're going through, no matter what's happened, they, I want you to realize, in case you didn't know it, that God always has a plan for your deliverance. He always has a way of escape. There's always a, strat a strategy. 
case in point, as the sisters are going to the tomb, they, they, they were in a place of mourning. They had witnessed a, a tragedy unlike anything seen on earth. The oxymoron of a savior that died was weighing heavy upon them. I can feel the weight, even these 2000 years later, that the one that they had seen perform miracles and done miraculous things, all of a sudden that came to an end in a tragic end because they saw a limp body. They witnessed an agonizing savior on the cross and they witnessed him uh, going through pain and anguish and, and all of that and their hopes not only did they see their savior die, their presumed savior die, but their hopes died. Uh, they hoped that this would be the king that would save them from Roman tyranny. They thought that this would be the one that would bring them and deliver them from the hands of the oppressors. But, but God had a strategy. He had a strategy. And I believe the strategy came because he knew that they needed a word. Uh, they needed a word. Is anybody out there need a word this morning? I don't know about you, but when I'm dealing with tragedy, I, I God hooked me up to your strategy by way of a word. Is I, I need an empowering word. So when they got to the tomb, it says that they were greatly perplexed. Once they saw the stone had been rolled away, the tomb was empty. Their immediate was reaction was they they were just greatly perplexed. They couldn't understand it. It's like what's going on. It's like this something is playing tricks in my mind. But here. When God wants to give you a word, sometimes he will send emissaries. He'll send ambassadors to bring you a word. In Luke, there were two men that stood by them in shining garments. These were probably two angelic beings. I guess it could have been Gabriel because Gabriel was always the one that could bring a word. Gabriel was the one that always uh, brought the message uh, when God is busting the move. Gabriel, I used to say, is God's FedEx. Gabriel is God's UPS. Gabriel is God's US mail. Uh, and maybe the second one might have been Michael. I'm guessing here uh, because in case them soldiers wanted to raise a sword or something, you know, Michael was the warrior. Michael was the admiral. He was the one that came down. And, and Michael was the angel that would lay hands on you if necessary. So these were their two brothers. I mean, two angels. Uh, these, you know, these angels were here. And they asked a relative question. Why do you seek the living among the dead? Oh, good Lord, have mercy. This is a wonderful, logical question, y'all, because the angels seemed almost surprised that the women were surprised that Jesus' body wasn't there. Because sometimes the word uh, can come, but you may not understand or be able to interpret or even understand the revelation that the word is revealing. It is sometimes through our anguish and our pain that it's hard for us to receive the word because we've allowed the pain to overcome our senses to a place where we can't understand the word. Uh, this was a wonderful uh, logical question, uh, you know, that, that for some reason they expected a body and the angels say, didn't you get the word? You didn't get the word? Uh, the word is that he, he he's not here. The angels made a point. The living are not to be found among the dead. We should not expect spiritual life among those who do not have it. You have been around people, I call them the walking dead, people who don't, who don't, have Jesus in their life, people who always got a scowl on their face, people who put more trust and confidence in man than they put in their God. They'll listen to words of a charlatan, might even elect them president. They'll listen to words <clears throat> that are con artist type words, words that are meant for their destruction and not for them to live. Uh, you know, it, we should not expect a spiritual life among dead people walking who just don't have it. Many look for Jesus in dead things. Religious traditionalism can be a dead thing that should remain in a tomb. Formalism, it could be 
our rules and regulations, human effort, all of these things uh, probably should remain in the tomb. But we find Jesus only where there is a resurrection, where he is worshiped in spirit and in truth. Can I give you a quick word as I move on to the next point? A quick word is that he, Jesus is, uh, there's a difference between resuscitation and resurrection. There is a difference between resuscitation and resurrection. Lazarus was resuscitated when Jesus went to the tomb and said, Lazarus, come forth. All the old preachers used to say, every Lazarus raised his head and Jesus said, not you, not you, not you, but you, this Lazarus. And, and he resuscitated Lazarus because Lazarus had been dead. His body came back to life. And when he came back to life with the same old body, that body was still subject to the sins and the troubles of this world. And that body would die again. That's a resuscitation. But resurrection means that when you, when you come back to life, all things are now brand new because now you have a glorified body. You don't have the same body. You're not dying again. You, you are resurrected now. And I want you to get and understand the difference between those two words, resuscitation and resurrection. Here, I wanted you to get to the power of, of, of those types of words. Because now as I run to my second point, uh, when, when you receive a word from the Lord, believe it. When you receive a word from the Lord, believe it. I ain't going to get real deep right here. But what did the angels tell them? They just said it just like this in four words. He is not here. Oh, Lord. Uh, I, I, Y'all thought I was going to go to some philosophical treaties about it. Y'all thought I was going to go into some theological understanding of why he was not there. Every now and then we go to the deep end. We want a deep word to show how erudite, how smart, how brilliant we are. But isn't it good that God can put that thing down where the goats can get it? God, When God gives us a word, he gives us a word where we can use it right at the level of our understanding. He just, the angels just said he's not here. Though no, these are some of the most beautiful and important words ever spoken by an angel to people. Oh my goodness. That 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 right there will preach itself. But then they probably still didn't get it. But then he said the son of man must be delivered into the hands all right of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day. All right, wait a minute. I want, I, I taught this in our Bible study last night. Out of all of these words that I just gave you, the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified on the third day. There's a whole lot in there. You got the son of man, deliverance into the hands of sinful man will be crucified and will write all those are important you know what i think is one of the most important words and all that is the word must uh, y'all missed it y'all didn't get it y'all must be be because i told you at the beginning that that tragedy links us up closer to god's strategy this is god's strategy now because he must be delivered that's the piece that they that, that messed them up I think that's the part that they didn't want to hear. You know, we, we, we don't want to hear certain words. We'll close our understanding. We'll close our thinking because we heard something that doesn't support our motives. We heard something that doesn't support our rationale and our being. But that word must is part of God's strategy. He had to be handed over. That's the word. Must is the critical word. Just as much as the crucifixion, Jesus, it was necessary. It was ordained it was in order for him to get to the place of resurrection and an empty tomb. But I want you to capture this. Here's my third and maybe my final point. My third and final point. My third and final point. When it's the right word, when it's the word, it will impact you to do the right thing because it said here, and they remembered his words. 
Uh, wait, where'd that come from? I did a Dr. Bae. She do that. Wait, wait, huh? Uh, they, they remembered his words. Now I want you to trail with me and then we're going to hoop and get on out of here because you you had an empty tomb. That didn't impact you to, to understand there was a resurrection. Then you had angelic beings. That didn't impact you enough to know that there was a resurrection. Then you had soldiers who had passed out. They just fainted. They just, oh, Lord, they just fell. They were gone. These soldiers were fainted. Uh, that didn't let you know. You had a whole big 2,000-pound boulder, uh, that stone uh, that was not rolled away, and yet still there was no, how come those did not impact? What impacted them was the word. Uh, uh, yeah, it was the word. Because when they heard the word, that the word spoke to them, then they remembered the words. Oh, my goodness. When they remembered Jesus' words, the empty tomb, the presence of angels, the words of angels in of themselves could not change their hearts. But what can change your heart? His word is what could change and cheer their hearts. It is the word. And, and, and it's interesting to note that Jesus Christ is the word. He is the word. He is the word. And I take you to John in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. Do I have to take you? If you, if you got his word, you got to hide it into your heart so that you may not, so that you won't sin again. It is the word that can, and every now and then, and when it seems like you've been crucified on the altar uh, of, of discrimination where you've been crucified on a Golgotha hill where somebody talked bad about you. When you've been crucified on a place where your character has been uh, talked about in a bad way, when, when you've been crucified and somebody just wrote a story about you that's not, when you've been crucified on a hill of Calvary of gossip and your name has been besmirched, that's old word. When it seems, that's old word. When it seems like you don't know which way to turn. Can I tell you, if you like me, all I need is a word from the Lord. And he gives us some words. He's given us some words. Here's a word from the Lord. Let us not become weary. Lord, have mercy. In well-doing. I, I don't want to holler, but I'm feeling it. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not faint, if we do not, that's a word I need from the Lord. When I feel weak in my body, when I don't think I can go on any further, I, I need some strength. Here it is. Here's a word from Philippians 4.13. I can do all things. Lord have mercy. Through Christ who strengthened. That's your word today. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ in front who Lord have be anxious for nothing, but in all things by prayer and supplication, let your requests be known unto God and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Lord, have mercy. Well, guard your heart. That's a word. I need a word. I need a word from the Lord. I know the plans I have for you, uh, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you and plans to give you a hope and a future. I need a word from the Lord. Jesus, who is the word? Can you give me a word? It says, Jesus, in Mark 10 and 27, Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but I got a word for you. But with God, all things. Not a few things, not a, a little tiny bit of things, but all things are possible uh, through God. Yeah, I need a word. I need a word when I don't feel like going on. I need a word when I feel some thoughts are hitting my head and I just want to give up on life. I need a word. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Uh, whoever, do you believe this? Do you believe this? I am the resurrection and the, I need a word. I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning 
and the end. I, I, I need a word from the Lord. Ezekiel says it's like the wheel in the middle of the wheel. I need a word for the Lord. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I need a word in my father's house. There are I many men. If it were uh -huh. not so, I would not yeah. have told you. I need a word from word. the Lord that God created need all word. things in the beginning. I need a word. <laughs> preach, the Lord Red, preach, preach. And see the yes, salvation sir. of I the need Lord. Word. I need a word from the Lord. Behold, I, word. I make all things new. I need a word from the Lord. You can't put new wine in old wineskin. <laughs> I need, need a, a word. word from the Lord. He said he's the ancient of days. I need a word from the Lord. Abide mm -hmm. in me and I'll abide in you. I need a word <laughs> from the Lord. Oh, yeah. <laughs> take up your bed. Take up your problems. Take up your situation. Take yes, up sir. your depression. Take up anything that's bothering you. Yes, take sir. up back your good health. Take up I your bed and walk. I need a word from the Lord. Your faith, word. here it is. Your faith has made you whole. I need, I need, I need, I, I need, need a word. word. From the Lord, <laughs> it is well with my soul. I need a word. I need a word. I need a word, y'all. Amen. I need a word from you. <laughs> I need a word from you. If I don't hear from you, what will I do? What is it? I need a word. I need a word. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God, my brother. Praise God. That was awesome. That was awesome. I thank you for that, for breaking that thing down. And, and you know, and you just carry that thing. And so if I remember correctly, what you said that has struck me and many people in the chat was that sometimes we can't hear the word. And I think really we don't listen to the word unless mm. it's a trauma or a tragedy comes. And mm -hmm. when that comes, if we uh, pay attention, if we listen, if we zoom into it, then that tragedy can lead us to God's strategy. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I love that. That's a shame. Yeah. Something deep has to happen to us, but we can say, what you say, God? <laughs> yeah, I, you, got, you have my attention now. <laughs> mm, got my attention now. You got my attention now. And then as you begin to unfold that story, I never thought about those angels as um, Gabriel and Michael. That was very profound. I had to think about that. I'm saying, mm, I go, suggest, Reverend Joe. I, I see Jesus. <laughs> that was yeah. the I see, I see Jesus. You know, that's what I see Jesus. I see Jesus. And then, and then you said their, 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 their Savior had died and then their hopes had died. And then God had that strategy to bring them to, to a place where they could begin to receive the word and then when they receive the word they had to be able to recognize what god is doing and then the idea of the difference between re re resuscitation and resurrection that was profound that was profound that if you resuscitate it you're gonna die again you you're know you're know, just brought back okay <laughs> yeah you, you're gonna you, die you again and resurrection me i know resurrection Woo, glory to <laughs> I'm telling you, you just broke that thing down early on a Thursday morning. And then you said, if we receive a word, we got to believe the word. What's the good in receiving it and not believing it? Yeah. Oh, when I talked about John 17 last night, it said, God prayed wow. for those, Jesus prayed for those who believed him, who received him and believed him. And that you must do it. You must. I was trying to find some synonyms for must. Give me some synonyms for must. I don't know. Have to. I don't know. Must is that's a hard little little word, isn't it? Right that's up there. It's a little there. word. It's imperative. I thought it's, a, I thought it's one of the most impactful words that holds that I must be delivered. You must. <laughs> it's like Jesus must needs go to Samaria. Remember that? That's he right. Must needs go with the woman. <laughs> that's right. And then he's it's ordained. <laughs> And then you you culminated everything with not just any word, but the right word. Somebody, everybody in chat was going off on that right word, the right word. You have to remember the word. It was the word. And what really got me with this was you said the word spoke the word. 
The word spoke the word. Because he was you the know, word. <laughs> you don't get any purer than that. <laughs> you don't get any purer when the word speaks the word, I'm telling you. And that's why we got to receive it. Let's I want to pray right now in the name of Amen. Jesus. God, thank you for this word that you released us this morning. And we hear the word and we hear it loud and clear. And we thank you that as the angel spoke it to us, we know that it was because of what Jesus, the word had done. We thank you, God, for your word that, that goes out and does not uh, come back empty or void, but it accomplishes what you want it to accomplish and it prospers where you want it to prosper. And we know that you sent your word to us to heal us and deliver us and sustain us. So we thank you, God, that there are times when we need to hear a word from you. And we thank you because the word is always nigh and we miss it sometimes because everything is going good. God, help us not to, to ignore the word when things are going good and not only to pay, uh, uh, pay attention to the word when we're going through stuff. Let us always hear your word and let us speak your word and live your word and talk your word and sing your word because your word is light and the entrance of your word brings forth that light. God, we love you right now for this word that Reverend Joe gave us this morning, that we need to be able to, to, to call unto you because there are times when we show enough need a word. And I thank you, God, for giving us that word this morning, for letting us know that the word is powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, cutting between a, a lie and the truth and the bone and the arrow. Oh, God, I thank you right now for your word that gives us strength your word that gives us hope, your word that is, is, is in our hearts, God, that we've hidden in our hearts that we wouldn't sin against you, God. And you said your word is, is plentiful. So God, when we need your word, let us fall on our knees and pray and seek your face and turn away from our wicked ways. And, and then uh, you'll hear us calling for a word and we'll oh, hear God. you giving us a word. So we thank you, God, for this word this morning that's opening up our understanding. And God, we thank you right now that understandings will be opened up this morning, that eyes have been opened up, that ears have been unclogged, that hearts have been uh, 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 tuned into you, God, for this word. We thank you for this word. We thank you for the message of this word. And we thank you for everyone who's listening. We thank you, God, that this word is going to be healing people this morning. It's going to be healing Kim, who um, we heard in the chat early on is going through some stuff. We know your word is going to be healing that little five, six-year-old brother, young boy with epilepsy, brother Ryan. We thank you that, oh. that your word is going to heal that little daughter who needs a transplant, Maya, at this age, and the mamas and the aunts and the grandmamas and the granddaddies and, and the cousins and the sisters and people in the hospital right now in the name of Jesus. God, let your word resonate throughout the hospitals and throughout the prisons in the name of Jesus, throughout our homes and throughout our hearts, throughout our churches. Let your word be magnified magnified, God, that your word be magnified, amplified, glorified, so that your word will come through. And let it even come through, not just the normal channels, God. Let it come through all the channels people don't expect. Let it come through something secular. Let it come through something unexpected. Let it come through someone Let it come through someone who's not a minister. Let it come yeah. from somebody. God, let your word come out every way it can. And God, we know that when your word comes out, it's going to come out clear and clean and our lives will be changed so My thank Lord. you god we started off saying we needed a word god we heard the word we received your word this morning because it's a right word and we thank you for this morning experience connecting and hearing your word in jesus name amen jesus name amen amen Woo! amen i pray uh, that maybe someone needed a word and and the way to get the word is to ask the word into your heart jesus christ that's that's why he got up from the tomb y'all i know i, I don't want to beat the dead horse but you know i know you said we just heard an easter message why are you coming back sometimes you have to reinforce the word inside of you yes you have to reinforce the word and so all you need is to say this after me lord if this is you Lord Jesus, I confess that I've sinned against you. I turn from my sin. I believe that you died on a cross to pay the penalty for my sins. I receive you as the Lord and Savior of my life. Uh, Paul said, if you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth 
then Jesus Christ will come in and you will be saved. If you prayed that prayer, if you need salvation, if you want to get closer to this word I was talking about this morning, all you got to do is go to www.readtemple.org forward slash read cares. There's a button there called salvation. That's what, that's why we prayed that prayer together. Salvation. That's, that's the whole reason we celebrated resurrection day. Salvation. Salvation. salvation for our resurrection into everlasting life and if you need a prayer sometimes I said you need a word sometimes you need a word through prayer and you know you need to have a conversation uh with with god you know we we bonicize i want to conversate that's not a word that we often use in the king's english but i know in the streets we use that sometimes it's just all it is you're talking to the lord and sometimes life might be a little heavy you need somebody to come in and pray with you and for you who's got some words on your behalf that's what intercessory prayer is if that's you mm -hmm. go to the same spot hit that button and if you've been trying to get your words from diverse places, you know, word can be disjointed. If you, you know, it, you, you can have a smorgasbord, eat this, that, this, that, that. And after a while, you start saying, okay, I'm, even, I'm, I'm, I'm eating this, but, but I need home cooking. I want the cabbage to taste this way. I want the greens to taste a certain way. I want the food to taste a certain way. That means I'm getting a balanced diet because I control what's yes. in that kitchen. Well, you come to one house, one kitchen, one house, read Temple AME Church. Why don't you join? Why don't you make a decision to join today where you get a steady diet of word that will bring nutrition to your very soul? I know Pastor Mark E, Reverend Dr. Mark E. Whitlock would love to be your pastor. Come on in the house. Quit, quit eating off. My mother used to tell me, can't eat it at everybody's house. She used to tell me that. And, and, you know, but come to a house where you can eat and you can trust and you know it's clean. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Something just happened to my phone. Hold on a minute. That's all right. That's all right. We'll keep going. Let me I, get off this thing. My, my phone just came on with a song that I was listening to. Doc, Doc probably got all kind of stuff going on with her, her devotional life. She probably need to pray for somebody. <laughs> oh, and also, while Doc's getting it together, uh, we pray. Come on. Yeah. Stop it. Okay. She's getting it together. Stop, 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 stop it. I'm just going to turn off my phone. And meanwhile, Joe, take them in to give. Yes, yes. So uh, prayerfully that you will come to a place where I you want to give into the house of the Lord. How do you do that? Y'all know, you know, those that are with us all, every morning, all you do is text Reed Temple to 45777. Text Reed Temple to 45777. Or visit the website at www.readtemple.org forward slash give or you can come by read temple 11400 glendale boulevard and while you're there we'll give you well you know come into church stay a while and bring in your tithes and your offerings let me pray over heavenly father i thank you for the people's giving and the heart they have to give your word says that you love a cheerful giver i pray that the people are cheerful and the people are excited about giving unto the lord and now lord bless them bless those that had the mind to give whatever reason cannot Bless the tithers. Bless those that are growing in tithing. From the widow's might to the billionaire's billion. Give Reed Temple uh, the wherewithal, the wisdom to use it only for the advancement of your kingdom and that alone. And we'll give you the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. And we're grateful for that. There are a few announcements, I believe. Uh, stewardship, the other 90%. Now, you know, the tithe is a 10%. So what do you do with that other 90%? And I think the faith and finance ministry of Reed Temple is on to something here. A virtual course on what you do with the other 90%. This happens Mondays, April 8th through May 27th from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Stewardship, the other 90%. That's good. That's good. Please, info, go to Reed faithandfinance at gmail.com.
Facebook.com. Amen. And then Luminous Health. I think Pastor Mark sits on that board. They're going to have a mobile health clinic with Reed Temple. They'll provide free blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol screening, April 20th, 2024. That's April 20th, 2020. You've got time uh, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. It's going to be right there at the church. Go to Reed Temple, 11400 Glendale Boulevard in Glendale, Maryland. Amen. Come and get your health in order. Amen. And also, there's a volunteer appreciation celebration. Oh, yeah. The, this is where the staff will be able to appreciate the volunteers. Uh, Saturday, Sunday, April 28th from 1130 to 2 p.m. Are you actively serving in ministry at Reed Temple? This celebration is for you. The attire now, you got to dress this way. Black, white, or silver. It's a dressy thing. It's a dressy affair. Register at reedtemple.org forward slash events. Save that date, Sunday, April 28th uh, at 1130 a.m. to 2 p.m. Come in as a volunteer. Be appreciated by the staff at Reed Temple. You are loved. You are truly, truly loved. Amen. Amen. Doc Praise is the Lord. back. Doc is back <laughs> in, the, in the saddle. She's back in the saddle. We are grateful, grateful. Devil. Sometimes the devil don't want the word to go out. Sometimes he just don't want, because he knows if the word goes out, he, man, his demise, he, if he can prevent us from hearing the word. Doc, you got anything you want to say? Because we, we missed you during the announcements. Oh, you know, I was sorry I couldn't be here, but you know, every now and then, you know, it happens and the enemy will take advantage of anything that's not tight and we never know what's going on in this technological world. But the key is to never give up. You fight your way back. Because I hit this button and that button and that button and that had to turn off everything and come back on. So that's the key. And when you have that word, that's how that word is. If you don't get that word the first time, you fight your way back till you get that word. And then when you get that word, that word is going to set you free. Rem Joseph P. Deck the third. thank you. Because not only did you need a word this morning, we yes. needed a word. And you gave us a good word, a right now word. Amen. Well, that means the world coming, coming from one of my mentors. I, it means the world to me, y'all, to hear her say that. And, you know, uh, make sure you stay tuned. Make sure, you, uh, I, I guess tomorrow's a free flow Friday. Tune into that. And uh, there's going to be a word from the Lord Friday. There's going to be a word from the Lord Sunday. Find your way to the word of God. And I believe it. you'll hear the truth, what Jesus said, and it'll set you free. God bless oh, you. Oh, wait a minute. One thing, one thing. Don't forget Sunday's communion Sunday. And you can uh, come to the church to get your communion elements if you don't have them. Uh, some of us go to the, you know, the, the Jesus bookstore or the other Bible stores and mm -hmm. get our communion elements. But if you don't have it, Come by the church tomorrow or Saturday between 10 and 2 so you can have communion with us. Amen. Amen. Grab Joe. Yes. All I got is love. That's the word. <laughs> love. <laughs> Amen. Love you.